top of the morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for November 30th, 2018. Well, hey, it's Friday, one of a, one of those days that just just the name Friday has everybody feeling better. Um, <laughs> and unfortunately, this Friday we're looking at uh, some issues here in the market that uh, certainly are affecting how the market is trading. So yesterday uh, I mentioned the fact that I was kind of, well, I, I alluded to the fact that there may be a possibility of a follow through just on the sheer momentum of Wednesday's move, but that proved not to be the case. We, we did move up slightly, but then gave it all back before the end of the day, leaving us with just this uh, little doji candle up here this indecisive candle right here and now this morning doggone it the futures are pushing us lower we're going to gap down this morning over 100 points it looks like gapping down into here and that may may constitute a failure of this resistance level now let's keep in mind that the G20 meeting beginning today, um, carrying through the weekend, really increases the risk of any positions we hold. There's an awful lot of weight being put on that G20 meeting. Will the two leaders, the U.S. and China, um, you know, kind of kiss and make up and start working on a a new trade deal, or will that divide only get pushed wider and wider between the two countries? Who knows what's going to happen, but they're certainly putting an awful lot of news focus and spin um, and speculation just swirling around that meeting right now. And obviously that has the market just a little bit um, concerned. So if we look at the markets, you know, it, it, it's easy to remember, you know, that big day move and, and everyone hoping that, you know, we just rip back to the upside higher. But we want to remember that resistance does make a difference, that we have to respect that price resistance. And we also have to be willing to see that the diamonds here are still in a downtrend. No matter how bullish that move might have been, we ran into that resistance. We're running into a downtrend situation. And if we look at our moving averages, on here we're rallying up to maybe test that 50-day moving average as resistance so we have a significant level of resistance level um, in there to deal with and the uncertainty around this g20 meeting um, really wouldn't be a surprise if we start seeing some selling here now what we don't want to see what we don't want to see is a true on failure pattern here. A true failure pattern where the sellers really follow through this morning after the open. Now consider this, if you're heading into the weekend and completely uncertain about what will happen on Monday morning based on the outcome of the G20 meeting, there could be uh, traders out there that decide just to avoid the risk, closing positions and selling coming in to the market. So we'll want to watch after that morning rush and that morning gap down this morning to see if there's follow through sellers pushing, um, uh, supporting that selling gap and pushing the market lower. So we'll want to watch that closely. I, personally, I hope that doesn't occur, but it, the, the possibility is certainly there and we're not doing ourselves any favor if we put our hand, head in the sand and only look at the chart for what we hope is going to happen. So kind of keep that in mind. We don't want to see that failure pattern, but if it does start to occur, then consider the risk that you're carrying into the weekend on uh, your positions. Let's take a look at the SPY, SPY, also in a very similar situation. And once again, if I were to adjust this, this trend line, notice that we've rallied right back to the resistance of the downtrend. And a failure here, which we are showing a bit of this morning with this gap down, that possibility of that failure right at this resistance point, um, well, you can certainly see what happens when that occurs. So we don't want to see that happen, obviously, but the possibility is there. And so we're going to want to watch that pretty closely.
um, as the day progresses and as the morning goes on, particularly, you know, even in the afternoon, if we do get some rally back, um, selling in the afternoon to avoid the risk of this weekend um, is entirely possible. So consider that risk as as you plan um, your day ahead and how you want to approach that kind of uncertain or unknown weekend event. Let's take a look at the queues. Queues also right there at that downtrend. This morning showing a, a gap down, possible failure. Now I think the queues is actually the worst of the bunch because we have continued in a downtrend pattern, creating new lows as we move lower. If the queues turn back lower, and fail here, a, a new low could certainly be put in. Where we have on the, the Dow and the SPY, we've kind of have that W bottom formation going on. And hopefully we would catch some support down in here. But as you can see, this right here is certainly um, a downtrend and a confirmed downtrend at that. Let's take a look at IWM. IWM hanging in there yesterday, just barely hanging in there, didn't push lower as those uh, small techs, or, or I mean small caps, tried to um, hold up. But here once again, if I adjust my downtrend here, you can see we, uh, we all we've really done is rally back to the resistance of that downtrend. And now with the gap down this morning, um, we introduce the possibility of a failure pattern here. So we'll want to watch that closely. You know, um, a, a pattern that no one wants to see again that failure pattern is where we we create these mornings or excuse me evening star patterns right at price resistance and that is certainly possible on all four of the indexes today so watch that closely and we're right there at that critical point of failure so we'll have to be pretty cautious on um, how we um, take a look at that or how we trade that and considering that into the weekend let's take a look at uh, the VIX now the VIX started up yesterday but ended up settling back down just kind of quieted down there um, toward the end of the day and as you can see we're still developing that wedge pattern in this price action and we're just we just continue to tighten up that pattern in here now I would expect we're going to see the VIX rally up this morning on this gap down whether it really gain speed or energy uh, we'll have to wait and see if there's follow-through selling after the open what we don't want to see is uh, um, obviously we don't want this pushing up into here breaking through that um, uh, downtrend resistance and really you know that might really bring in some major fear and even panic um, into the market so we don't want to see that occur what we want to see is this to just continue to wind around in here and hopefully we can get that failure here eventually if there's particularly if there's a good result from the g20 let's um take a look one more chart i'm going to have you take a look at um vxx vxx is is more of the retail trader uh, VIX. Okay, this is uh, an ETF uh, on uh, VIX features. And as you can see, we're developing this wedge here as well on the VIX features. As a retail trader, you might want to keep an eye on this today. If we really see this starting to creep up uh, much, and you can see we're gapping up this morning, if that really starts to creep and really move higher, um, that would probably indicate some fear coming into the market and we can maybe see that that selling accelerate. So um, just a place to kind of keep an eye on today. Um, let's look at T2122. T2122, that four week new high, new low ratio. I plot that um, that indicator just simply on a on a simple line chart and as you can see this is this is a very consistent indicator we rally up in here to these bearish reversals uh, what I call the bearish reversal zone and we turn and head south we 
push down into this bullish reversal zone and we typically rise up and as you can see right in here we're kind of in a well a, a no man zone an uncertain zone here for the market we're we're certainly up here above the 50 percent area um in this and which means we have plenty of upside room and plenty of downside room uh to move here in the market so we kind of have to stay on that side of you know anything is possible and with the pressures that the market is seeing right now um, there's plenty of room to move to the downside so don't put your head in the sand thinking it's just not possible after that big wednesday move because it certainly is and this um, chart has proved that over and over and over as we've shown right in here these big spike ups in price action we spike up and then we just sell right off so hopefully that that doesn't occur here today but the possibility does exist and you want to pay attention to that as we head into the weekend let's take a quick look here at the earnings calendar excuse me the economic calendar that economic calendar uh, as you can see today is actually fairly light not much going on here we have a bunch of bond settlements we have a fed speaker and we have the chicago pmi which uh, can move the market but unlikely to move it much um, and, and that's kind of a light day for the market and it's also a light day on our um, earnings calendar with only about 70, 17 companies reporting today and those earnings are coming in pretty quickly um, this morning so kind of keep an eye on those earnings reports remember we don't want to be caught holding something and not knowing about uh, an earnings report and um, pay attention to that you know yesterday in the youtube video i had a had a critical comment saying that um you know i'm i'm selling tc2000 hard let me let me address that just for a second i i, I had mentioned yesterday that tc2000 if you look at a chart um you know let's take like sears holding um um, Sears Holding is is on the calendar today for um, an earnings, but well, I, that's a bad choice um, or a bad pick because Sears Holding is in that uh, bankruptcy um, situation. Let me pick another chart here um, that's reporting today. Um, as BOT. Now, this little guy, um, obviously a penny stock, not worthy of, of paying attention to really, but you can see that the earnings date pops up here at the top of the chart. Now, the thing is, I am really not trying to convince anyone to buy TC2000 or not. I keep bringing that up um, just simply for, because I use this software and I use it, I've used it for um, probably 20 years or more and I find it really essential to my trading success it, it gives me great information and great data whether you choose to use it or not is entirely up to you I really don't care and um, not certainly not trying to be some kind of a hard seller of this what I do uh, point out is they gave me a coupon that I can share with everyone to save some money on it and um, I share that out there uh, freely just because I if you're if you're needing a good piece of software this is a good option are there other software packages out there yes I choose TC 2000 but there's certainly other choices out there that you can make so uh, you know uh, somebody wants to be critical about that fine I truly am just trying to help other traders hey with that everyone I'm not going to put out any uh, trade ideas uh, today just simply because I think the risk of this weekend um, anything is possible so be really careful as you head into this weekend and, and think about that risk that you might be taking and it could be bullish or bearish there's no way to know what the result of this meeting is going to be and um, we could see a, a, a great big gap up on Monday we could see a great big gap down there's no way to know so 
Uh, it all depends on how much you want to gamble, how much risk you're willing to take as you head into the weekend. So everyone, with that, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you a awesome, awesome weekend. And everyone, take care of yourselves. Be careful. Be safe. We'll talk to you all bright and early Monday morning. Have a good one.